I have a few case scenarios on the decline of orchid pseudobulbs and for the most part why they are declining being different for each orchid. If you find yourself with similar looking pseudobulbs then you have come to the right channel because with all these examples I'm going to talk you through the reasonings behind the decline of the pseudobulbs and clarify why the decline has occurred. As well as each example will be dealt with based on the individual diagnosis. If you have never seen this happen in your orchid collection, I appreciate that you clicked on the video and encourage you to watch it because maybe one day it will serve its purpose. So it's cup of time and let's talk about it. But before I get into all of that, let me tell you that there are many factors why pseudobulbs decline or rot out. The most prominent reasons for this happening are the temperatures drop to a level that the orchid is not supposed to be exposed to and the opposite spectrum is true as well. It got far too hot for the orchid, taxing the pseudobulb and causing the decline. Sunburn is another reason a pseudobulb can decline, however that will depend on the extent of the exposure to the sun. It may just leave a mark as a reminder of the exposure, but the pseudobulb doesn't necessarily decline. But be mindful of the fact that if you are someone who likes to peel the sheaths off of the pseudobulbs, that you also protect the orchid from getting nailed by direct sun. You will not be able to rely on airflow to cool down the structure because the pseudobulb for the most part is filled with water and the heat of the sun on the structure will literally cause the water within the bulb to heat up and destroy the cell structure. While we find the dried sheaths unsightly after a certain period of time, they do serve their purpose to protect the structure from any harsh elements. Of course, keeping the sheaths on also makes for a great place for pests to have a field trip. So sun exposure is a real threat to the bulbs if we remove the sheaths because yes, we just talked about the pests, they will do damage to pseudobulbs as well. That does not include the Myrmecophila genus because when it comes to ants especially, if you see a hole at the base of your pseudobulbs on a Myrmecophila, that means that ants are making their home in there. Ants in this scenario do not do any damage to the pseudobulb they populate. The orchids and ants live in harmony and whatever ongoings the ants are up to in the bulb itself, that provides nutrients to the orchid. However, pests like scale and other tissue sucking pests can really do a number on the structure. My example here is a result of thrips that were having a great time while the growth was growing with the protective sheath still around it. Once damage is done to a pseudobulb when it comes to pests, including your feathered friend, if tissue has been compromised, it is best to treat it straight away with cinnamon or dragon's blood to prevent infection and to hope that the remaining structure is still connected for the most part so that the storage organ can still perform as such and not decline completely. Fungi are nasty for the health and well-being of every organ and if not dealt with, then bacteria will join in on the shenanigans and attach themselves to the feast on dead tissue that the fungi have left behind. Subsequently, bacterial rot will cause issues within the pseudobulb, etc. Usually, if we do not ensure that a cut or a division was not treated with some form of drying agent like cinnamon or dragon's blood, then bacteria does not need fungi to pave the way to get into the structure and take it down. In order to get a correct diagnosis of anything untoward looking on your pseudobulbs, knowing the history of your orchid is important as well. If your orchid has been in your collection for several years, you will have an understanding of how she behaves and if things like this happen, then that is not normal and a little bit more recall needs to be done as to if any of the things I have mentioned earlier have occurred for your orchid to start showing unhappy pseudobulbs. If your orchid is a newbie in your collection and you have not had years of experience with her in your collection and something weird is starting to happen, then my examples may also come in handy because you do not know what was going on while she was still with the seller or what kind of conditions she had to endure while she was being shipped to you. So with those common reasonings elaborated on, let me go through and show you my examples. What happened and this is the end result and how I'm going to go about dealing with each one. 
Let's start with the easy one first, Mimoco Cattleya, Memoria Louise Fuchs Purple. We can clearly see a totally desiccated pseudobulb in the back and that is important. It is in the back end of the orchid, it is the oldest part, so this one declined due to age. If you have the situation in your collection and want to tidy the orchid up, then cutting the pseudobulb as close to the rhizome as possible is an option, or sometimes, if you have waited long enough and the bulb is dried out, twisting it off may be less of an intervention because what you do not want to do is cut into live tissue at the rhizome, which would need to be treated with a desiccating agent very quickly to avoid an infection that in this situation is non-existent. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you what I decided to do in each case scenario, but for now, let's move on to the next example. And while I get the next orchid, would you do me a solid and please like the video? Also subscribe to the channel for more educational and sometimes fun orchid videos. Thank you so very much. Know that I appreciate your support and vote of confidence. So here is my crassest example of them all. This is Rincolelio Catlia Sunya Green, the name cultivar mailman. And this, while it looks as though the pseudobulbs have the same symptoms of an aging pseudobulb, clearly there's something else going on, and that is temperature. This orchid did not appreciate the cold temperatures in combination with low light levels during the months of January through to mid-March. And that here in southern Spain. So prior to this happening, the orchid lost all the leaves in rapid succession, starting with the oldest leaves first, and then the pseudobulbs one by one started to collapse as well. Cold temperatures in combination with low light levels makes it impossible for the orchid to photosynthesize and maintain some form of energy levels. This depleted the structures to this point, but it is trying a new growth, so I will address what my plans are moving forward at the end. Next up, my Rincolalia Catlia Golf Green Hair Pig. Now, this pseudobulb had me scratching my head for a hot minute because this orchid came out of the winter just fine until the new growth started to push from that structure. And then the leaf yellowed, as with the previous example of the mailman, and fell off. The decline moving down into the pseudobulb makes this example a concern because it is not happening on the oldest part of the orchid, but the front lead. However, I think we can deal with this and help stop the process, but it's a strong signal that this orchid did not appreciate the winter conditions either. Moving on to my Cattleya Zagari Wax African Beauty. This is a classic example of the culture of the orchid gone wrong, totally wrong. So if you see this and if you've had your orchid for a considerable amount of time and you know that you were trying to get your setup to work for successful cultivation and over time a once vigorous orchid has weird pseudobulbs, then you know that it was your culture that was wrong or is wrong. Not necessarily temperature based, but the setup. That is what happened with African Beauty. I know that Lekka and self-watering works for all orchids, but some are easier to transition than others. So over the years, I have tried different Lekka ratios to make it work, but clearly I have been wrong every single time. So I have brought the orchid to this stage where she's now in full-on rescue mode. The decline of the pseudobulb in the back would not be a major concern if this orchid was growing well, but under these circumstances, this decline is alarming because the orchid is drawing everything out of the storage organs she has remaining, which aren't many, so that she can attempt at growing a new growth, which she is doing. My next example is my beautiful Epidendrum Stamfordianum. Beautiful, you say? <laughs> well, to me she is. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it, but I have been fighting for this orchid since 2018, and until she dries up like all the back bulbs you see here, I will keep fighting for her. With this diagnosis, it is important to also know the history to get an understanding as to why the rapid decline of the pseudobulbs in the back has happened. Because up until the temperatures warmed up, I still had the larger of the leafless back bulbs looking plump and functioning. Their decline is alarming because this orchid doesn't have anything else to work with but one week revival growth and the growth from 2022. She is attempting to grow another new growth and I see that roots are on the move, as in branching. So this expenditure of energy has caused a weak orchid to draw energy from what she had left in the back. She is fighting for survival 
needed the energy in the back and well is dealing with some underlying issues that she came with. Fusarium has not been positively diagnosed with her, but it is a possibility that she has it, struggled with it for a couple of years, and is trying to grow out of it. Because her root growth last year was sensational. The first time she ever grew gorgeous roots. So this is an example of an orchid that has a history of not being well, but is fighting to pull through. Now, with all the history and all the diagnosis and all the experience, etc., with the orchids that I'm showing as an example, every once in a while, some orchids will come across and you're going, what happened here and why? So, my last example is a little bit of a head scratcher because this is the only pseudobulb on my Epidendrum ostedii that showed rot at the base of the pseudobulb. The rest of the orchid is just growing an insane number of new growths. So in this case, I don't want to say it was a pest because I did not see any on the orchid. I cannot say it is cold damage because the orchid did suffer cold stress, but that showed on the leaves. And if it were because of the cold, then I have to ask the question, why only on this growth? Water on the rhizome during the cold period? That didn't happen because she's in a self-watering setup. So during those precarious months, I only added water into the reservoir to avoid the lecker from drying out. So sometimes if you have an example like this, even though I said rot at the beginning of the example, it has not spread either. So sometimes you have to look at a case scenario like this and see that the rest of the orchid is doing fabulously. The area that is compromised is not spreading. That's important. It is isolated to that one part of the rhizome. And in this case, I am doing absolutely nothing. It is not hurting the orchid, whereas me cutting into the rhizome may start a certain chain reaction, which right now I do not have. So I'm letting the growth deteriorate without any intervention just to be on the safe side. As I'm now determining what I'm doing with the different case scenarios, we are going back to the Epidendrum Stamfordianum. In this case, while I could cut the back end off to make the orchid more tidy, I'm also leaving everything as is. It helps with the further observation as well, and it also protects the possible error of me cutting into live tissue in the rhizome, which is something that must be avoided when it comes to weak and stressed orchids. So doing nothing, in this case, is the best course of action. Pretty looking orchids are beautiful. This is unsightly, but for the sake of the orchid, I'm looking past that. Moving back to Zagarik Wax, African Beauty. Well, she is in rescue mode, and yes, I will intervene in this case, but only once new roots grow. There's no point cutting off the back suitable right now because we will be attempting to save this orchid by changing her setup entirely. Cutting that bulb off at this time makes absolutely no difference. So stay tuned for when this orchid is going into a different setup. And once that video airs, I will link it in the description. Back to golf green hair pig. Right, here we are going to do something and we are going to do it now. I am going to cut the brown section of the pseudobulb off much, much lower than where the actual brown stops so that I can get into the healthiest tissue that my naked eye can discern. And I will add a clip at the end of the video and have a dissecting session, cut the top part in half and see what that looks like. But first of all, after the cut, I have to put cinnamon on this thing. This has to dry out fast, especially if you are in an environment with high humidity. This is a major wound and well, as mentioned, these kinds of wounds open the orchid up to all sorts of secondary issues, which we do not want to encourage. Okay, back to my Easter Island statue, aka Mailman. As this orchid is attempting a new growth, I am doing absolutely nothing with the exception to see if this new growth stands a chance. From what I can tell, there are some viable roots in the pot. She does not have anything to photosynthesize with, so this is not looking good. But it would be a huge mistake to unpot this orchid, put her in an ICU setup in the hopes of developing the new growth under that kind of setup. This orchid does not need to be exposed to any additional stressors and sometimes it is just best to leave an orchid as is, don't interfere, flush and lightly fertilize and then see what she can or cannot do. Maybe the growth won't make it under these conditions, 
but I can say with confidence that unpotting the orchid at this stage, trying to help with high humidity dome kind of ICU setup, she will collapse within a month, if not faster. The viable roots are the only hope this orchid has, and those roots would perish if removed from the current status quo they find themselves in. So, all eyes on the new growth and continue to wait it out. That is my recommended course of action for this kind of an example. Remember Louise Fuchs Purple? Let's try and see if we can just twist the old bulb off without any issues. And if the bulb does not come off easily, then in another week or two, it will without cutting it. I really hope that this video gave you a good insight into the different variables of why pseudobulbs start to decline or out of the blue go from great to funky and scary things happening, as well as the decision-making process of what to do in the most common scenarios. If you have any examples specific to your environment and orchid, I have a Help My Orchid questionnaire, which I offer as a service for a diagnosis as well as treatment plan that I can provide a link for if you need help with any specifics. Let me know in the comments any questions, any additional information you would like to share with others that may go to the comments for more information. Please feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, thank you so, so much for watching. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition, though please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bonus for anybody that stayed to the end. Let's have a look at Golf Green Hair Pig's Pseudobulb. It's already discoloring. That's super interesting because I didn't put any cinnamon on this. Anyway, let's give this a go. With a sharp chef's knife, I know, my gorgeous knives are being used for orchids. <laughs> so what else is new? Now the pseudobulb doesn't feel soft, squishy or anything like that. It was hard. It wasn't oozing. Weird, huh? Very, very strange how it dried from the top and is moving its way down. I do believe we got into good tissue because you can see how here it's still yellowy. There's sort of a yellow arc around here. And underneath that, it's nice and green. So we'll see what that growth does. But here we are, cross section of a declining pseudobulb. Let's hope that golf green hair pig stays in the collection. Thank you for watching. Bye.